got a little bit of a, I guess, geeky haul today. I'm going to be showing you some of the games and the books and a little bit of an unboxing as well um, of some of the stuff that I got recently. So I guess we'll jump in. Quite a lot of this stuff um, was decent price, like the games that I got were pretty good price and um, the uh, majority of the books that I got was pretty good price. But I have got something that kind of boosts up the price because... Um, uh, you'll see, even though you know in the title already. Okay, yes, I got a tablet. Okay. <laughs> right, let's just jump in with some of the games I got. So, I got three games from CEX, or as I like to call it, Sex. I mean, their Wi-Fi is unprotected sex, like spell a CEX, so that's quite funny. Because they know some of their customers call it that. <laughs> so, I got three pretty cool games. If any of you are interested in maybe a review of some of these, and the books, of course, as well, then I'd be happy to do so if that's what you want, of course. I've got the first game in the Professor Layton series. This is Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Um, I managed to snag this for four pounds. They had pretty much the entire series there for about, I'd say about 10 pound and under. So I almost got all of them, but I thought I'd go the route that Joe went and kind of just get the first one. They, they had quite a few of the other games there anyway. So, I mean, it's something that hopefully I can easily access again. But yeah, get the first one, see what it's like, um, see if I like it, and then maybe get the next ones when I've finished this or halfway through or something like that. So um, I'll read you what this is about. In the curious village of Saint Mystery, puzzles are part of everyday life. So when a wealthy baron's will points to a hidden treasure, it's up to a puzzle mastermind, Professor Layton, to unravel the mystery, stretch your grey matter to self brain teasers and piece together the clues to uncover Saint Mystery's secret. It looks really awesome. Um, I've heard so much great stuff about these games. It's been something I've been wanting to try for quite a while and I've only just decided to get them. So yeah, I hope I enjoy this. Let me know if you've played that and what you think of it too and if it's worth continuing on the series. The next game here I got is actually my first ever game in this series and it's Final Fantasy 3. Apparently it's pretty decent um, and yeah I haven't played the others because they're all on, well from my knowledge at least, they're all on consoles and um, just yeah I guess consoles that I don't own and I thought oh because this is on the DS I can easily play this. So I managed to get this for £10 which I think is pretty reasonable. Apparently you don't need to uh, have played the other games in order to appreciate this so I'm hoping that's the case because I don't really want to miss anything on story but if it's okay to play without knowing anything about the world and everything like that hopefully it'll be great. So a fantasy reborn. As their world descends into darkness four young heroes are chosen to bear the burden of its fading hope. Available for the first time in Europe, classic Final Fantasy gameplay meets sparkling visuals to provide a wholly new experience. Um, I really can't wait to try this out. I've, it's just been something that everybody seems to love, like Final Fantasy, the franchise in general. I've seen some awesome cosplays, I've seen some awesome reviews, and I just want to jump into this world and see if I enjoy it as much as everybody else does, so looking forward to that one too. And then the last game I got, um, by the way, these are all Nintendo DS um, games, but I'll be playing them on my 3DS because that's the one I use the most. Um, sorry, itchy armpit. <laughs> the last one I got here is Super Scribble Noughts, and I managed to get this for £5. So um, I've been wanting to play Scribblenauts since it came out again. The most innovative award winning puzzle adventure game for all ages. Just think it, write it, solve it. I actually think I've got this on the PC as well but I, I got a little bit confused and I just haven't gone back to it since but I'd be interested to play it in DS format. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of uh, another puzzle kind of game. I think I've got two puzzle games, which I don't know why because I'm terrible at solving puzzles but um, it looks like such a fun game and uh, I hope to enjoy this one. <laughs> the books now, I've got way more books than i got games. I just, I fall to that side more than games, but there's two things I still equally enjoy in a way. Kind of not equally, but I still enjoy them both. So the first two books I've got to show you are from W.H. Smith. I got Half Lost by Sally Green. This is the third and final book in the Half Bad series by Sally Green. Um, I am so excited to get to the finale, conclude this awesome trilogy. I've really been enjoying this. I got this for $7.99 in WH Smith. And if you don't know uh, what this series is about, I've got a review. I can't remember if it's spoiler or not, so you know, check that out. See what it says in the title, but I'll link that there for you of the first two books and the little um, novella that's in the second book that I had. Um, but this series is about Nathan, who is trying to figure out himself um, I don't want to say exactly what the book's about because I went in not really knowing too much about it but a lot of people do know the basis 
it, it's got a fantasy element there, a fantasy kind of creature. And if you want to know what that creature is, look up some reviews and stuff and find out for yourself. I don't want to spoil it for you, but just in the general sense, he's trying to find out if he's good or bad. And um, it's really, really interesting. It's a really good story, and I love the way that it's written. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to finish this series. So, up next is the second book that I also got in WH Smith. This is Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. I heard a lot about this on Booktube of late, and I don't know, it didn't sound necessarily something that I was super stoked to read about. It didn't seem exactly the, the settings that I usually go for, but it was quite unique in itself, and I thought I'd give it a go. So, it actually seems like it's set in an almost Arabian kind of world old west setting but with I've heard kind of like an older based magic so that's really intriguing again something that I'm not used to in a setting and that's why I wasn't initially completely drawn to it but it's still quite unique in itself and it sounds like this girl is on the run from uh, I think it's her family and I think she meets this other person who's on the run and they kind of go off together um, I guess learning about themselves about the world and stuff that's at least what I'm getting from the synopsis so it just sounds like an adventure kind of young adult magic fantasy book like everything mushed in together so I'll be excited to see how this is if any of you have read this let me know what you think about it obviously without spoiling anything because I haven't read it yet um but yeah it, it seems like an interesting one I'll be excited to pick that up the next four books are actually from a hospital and um, there's this hospital called All Set and it's like my grandparents go there for like their eyes and stuff and every time I go there I come back with like a horde of books so I thought I'd show you some of these not all of them I actually know much about so I if I do tell you a little bit about them I'm probably just going to read it off of the back so this first one here it looks to be a penguin classic and it's Evelyn Walls or oh, wow I'm, I don't know how to pronounce that um Black Mischief and that's what it looks like um, I have no idea what this is about, so I'll read you the back. Um, when Oxford-educated Emperor Seth succeeds to the throne of the African state of Azania, he has a tough job on his hands. His subjects are ill-informed and unruly, and corruption, double-dealing and bloodshed are rife. However, with the aid of the Minister of Modernisation, Basil Seal, Seth plans to introduce his people to the civilised ways of the West. But will it be as simple as that? I was honestly drawn in by the fact that it's a Penguin classic, and also... I don't know the interesting um, cover but um, yeah it seems interesting enough again nothing that I'd usually go for but I want to kind of explore more genres and kind of see if I like other stuff rather than just YA and fantasy and you know things like that I want to kind of expand my my knowledge of genres so to speak so again if any of you have read these books let me know what you think about them and maybe give a better synopsis than I can give myself because for quite a few of these I know nothing about I just cover by as kind of thing you know so yeah sounds pretty cool so then I've got this other one it's a collection um, by Reader's Digest and it's got four stories in it it's got Carter's Castle, The Great Husky Race the Red Fox and the Flame Trees of Thicker. Now I actually got it because I liked, again, the cover looks absolutely beautiful and the fact that it's got a story called The Red Fox because, I don't know, I'm really into foxes and as I'm filming this now, I'm reading Packs by Sarah Pennypacker, I think her name is. So, I don't know, I've just been on the lookout for more books to do with fox or at least has the name in the title. I don't know. Really silly reason. This is what the books look like that are in this collection. It says condensed books, so I'm not sure if it's actually got the whole of the story in there or if it's kind of just like chapter samples or something. Um, but either way, it'd be an interesting insight to see and maybe look them up because they are older books, so I don't know. It's, it's good to kind of go back and see what literature was like a little bit earlier on in life. So, um, so Carter Castle is by Wilbur Wright. The Great Husky Race is by Jose or Jose Giovanni. The Red Fox is by Anthony Hyde, and The Flame Trees of Thicker is by Elspeth Huxley. Oh, they do have their own kind of synopsises, um, but I won't go into detail of them. They've got nice little illustrations as well. Um, so it's definitely a delicate book because some of the pages are coming out, um, but look how beautiful some of the um, little designs are. Really nice. So yeah, I'll be excited to try this out. It might be one of those books that I just dip in and out of every so often. Um, but yeah, really pretty one and I'll be interested if I enjoy this to look up some more 
Reader's Digest books like this because I have a Reader's Digest books but it was this big folklore myths and legends of Britain that I'm reading um, that's taken me absolute months I feel like that would take me forever to read <laughs> but yeah so I've got another Reader's Digest books and I'm liking their, their content so far so the next one here I have is Julian Barnes, Arthur and George. This was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize 2005 and again cover by. This looks really stunning, it's quite simple in its design but quite captivating quite clearly because I wanted to see what it was about and get it. Again I don't really know too much about this but from the brief bits that I picked out of the synopsis it doesn't seem like anything I'd usually go for. Um, it seems like these two guys are maybe good friends, I might be completely wrong. But you know what, I could just read you the back. <laughs> Arthur and George grow up worlds apart in late 19th century Britain. Arthur in shabby gentle Edinburgh, George in the virage of a small Staffordshire village. Arthur becomes a doctor, then a writer. George, a solicitor in Birmingham. Arthur is to become one of the most famous men of his age, while George remains in hard working obscurity. As the new century begins, they are brought together by a sequence of events that made sensational headlines at the time as the Great Worthy Outrages. I don't know what that is. <laughs> There's some more but I think that's enough to kind of go on. Um, but yeah, if it got shortlisted for an award it must be decent, you know. And then I have got Wonder by RJ Palacio and it's a nice hardcover book. Um, I've been wanting to read this for a while. I think Chloe read it and I think she liked it and also there's a, I don't know if it's a novella or just a shorter book um, following this character and two other people I think. Um, oh, there's a something in here. There's a little poster. That's strange. The little Barcelona map. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Okay, don't really know what I'm going to do with that, but okay, a little hidden treasure. So it sounds like this main character has like a disorder with his face and he wants to be normal but every time he tries to socialise with people they seem to run away and they get scared and stuff and I think it's just about him kind of finding out about himself, his life and kind of getting on. He's only 10 years old so I, I think it's almost like a slice of life sort of story but um, yeah I've heard quite good things about this and again it's another genre that I don't usually dip into but I'd love to know more about so definitely again as I've been saying for all of the stuff in this video I'm excited to get to. <laughs> so the last two books I've got are ones that I got from Asda but I think they're about £4 each or the deal that I got they were two for seven so I didn't really I'm not really interested in movie times funnily enough both of these books are because of movies <laughs> that have recently come out or are due to come out or whatever and the first one here is Room by Emma Donoghue I've been wanting to read this again for quite a while I didn't necessarily want to get the one with the movie cover but there's another cover that I really liked but um it wasn't there but I wanted to get a book so I got it um but I think what this is about just loosely a lot of you probably already know you might have seen the film already um, but it's about a boy and his mum. I think all they've ever known is one room and I think they're trying to escape or I don't know just trying to, to leave that room. I don't know if they're being held hostage or what. I don't know why they're just in this room and why that's a, all they've ever known. Um, so I'd be interested in finding out. I think it's from the point of view of the son called Jack who is only five years old so it'd be interesting to read from that perspective. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested in to get into this, so I think it'll be quite a heartwarming, maybe emotional read, so yeah. And the last book here I've got is The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. I don't think I've actually ever read The Jungle Book. And as the film's coming out soon, like the um, live action kind of CG film, I thought might as well give it a go. This is a really attractive edition. It's about Mowgli. I don't know when the last time I was that I watched the film to be honest so I really don't know much about it. So it's about this boy who's kind of been raised with the, the jungle animals and he's kind of learning how to be among them and stuff like that. So yeah. So I think I'll be excited to get to this again as I've been saying constantly. So yeah that's the last book for this haul. Now let's get to the really really fun part even though all of these are pretty fun but unboxing okay so I'm assuming this is my tablet I ordered the Amazon Fire um, so I can use Kindle on it but I also it might be helpful for maybe uni or something like that and I've just been reading Kindle books and stuff like that things from NetGalley on my phone and PC and I just thought you know what I should probably get a tablet you know 
so I went to opt for an actual tablet rather than a Kindle or an e-reader so that I can actually do other things um, but still have that experience you know to read on a on a Kindle you know so yeah this came really quickly I ordered it like one like this took literally one two days two days to get here so I am super excited is seven inches and it was it was 50 pounds for the product but it came up to like three pound 99 i think for pmp and i think it came quickly because they've opened a amazon warehouse near where i live so i think pretty much everything comes up really quickly now if they've got it there oh wow So it comes in this little baggie and inside that a really cool orange bag, I guess for the fire. <laughs> I've got to Instagram this, sorry. <laughs> the most sensible tablet it says. I'm really excited. Oh my god, okay. Alright, let me just read you some stuff. Okay, so it's a 7 inch display, 1024 by 600. Uh, wi Fi, 8 gigabytes, quad core, front and rear cameras. I thought it just had a front camera. Oh, micro SD slot up to 128 gigabytes. Includes Fire 7 inch tablet, 5th generation. Ooh, that means I can do some of those updates, I think it said. Amazon 5W power adapter, USB charging cable, built in rechargeable battery, personalised special offers and sponsored screen savers, pair with, pairs with Fire cover sold separately, content and serviceability may vary by location and date. Fast and responsive, um, apps and games that are completely free. Incredible selection of movies, books and more. Great for the whole family. Stay connected. Let's just open this. Oh my god. I'm so excited. Okay, so this is the adapter. Or oh, the charger thing. I don't know what this is about. Oh. Oh, it looks like a little tiny phone. <laughs> I guess this has got like information on how to use it and stuff. Then I've got the plug thing. Oh, it is too cute. This is so freaking adorable. Oh. Yeah, and I think it does just have the front camera. Don't know what that was about on the back. Maybe that was just a generic thing. Oh. <laughs> it's so cute. Look at it. It's not too big. It's not too small, it's just a nice size. So that's it for this video. I can't wait to set this up. Um, let me know if you've read any of these things, if you've played any of these games and what you thought of them and if you've got this as well. So for now, I shall wish you a good day and I shall speak to you next time. Bye. Ooh.